Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay, so today is a day of potential hot takes. Uh, basically, what I am doing is borrowing an idea that I saw on Jean Bookish Thoughts channel. If you are not following Jean, you definitely should be. She is one of my favorite YouTubers. She's a big booktuber, so I'm sure many of you have heard of her, but She's of the kind of really big booktubers, um, probably the one whose taste is closest to my own, especially in the sense of she really does read in almost every genre. She's she's definitely an omnivore. She loves the classics. That's what she's getting her PhD in. So anyway, she's fantastic. And I really love her content. I feel like she just makes like super solid, like, Mm, like just good booktube content. So I feel like she's kind of an old reliable in that in that respect as well. But anyway, she actually has two video ideas that I'm borrowing. <laughs> Reviewing the top 10 rated books that I have read. So I'm going to go to my Goodreads and I am going to go to my, my read section and then I'm going to sort by highest ratings and see of the books that I have read what are the top 10 highest rated books? And then I'm just gonna give you like little mini reviews of each of them. And we'll see if my if I like them better, if I like them worse, if I really agree or disagree. Um, I'm assuming that there may be some series in here just because often that is the case, like especially as you get kind of like later in a series, often the average rating goes up because the people who are still reading the series are really dedicated to it. So I'm assuming there may be some series if there's any like duplication factors here. Um, I will only talk about the series once and just skip over it and, and go to the next one. So I just thought this might be kind of interesting. We'll see what kind of hot takes or if I'm just totally basic and, and pretty much go along with the consensus opinion. Okay, I've been trying to get my screen recorder to work and it's just not happening. So I'll go back later. But I did go ahead and sort by red and I went and sorted by average rating as well and got my top 10. And just in looking through that top 10, there's some controversy that we, we will get to, I'm sure, here in a little bit. There's also several uh, series on this list, which is not surprising. So starting with the first one, The Hooded Gunman by John Curran. So this is one where I think the reason why the rating is so high, it's like 4.9, is because there's not that many ratings. I believe there were 10. And... Uh, I gave this three and a half stars. It is a good book. Like it's a, basically kind of like a coffee table book that is a illustrated, an illustrated history of the Collins Crime Club, uh, which is sort of like a classic mystery um, imprint. That is where Agatha Christie published all of her or most of her uh, original books back in the day. So uh, it's beautiful to look at. There was some interesting information in there, but I wouldn't say that the writing was like that great. And judging it as a book, I would not give it a 4.9. I think 3.5 is actually pretty generous on my part. So I would give that three, three and a half stars. And I would say it's definitely of interest if you have a niche interest in this book in particular. I wouldn't recommend it to like a general audience. It's more just like if you're interested in the topic. Uh, but it, you know, it's well done and it is very beautiful to look at in a book that I'm happy to have on my shelves. So that is the highest rated one. The next highest rated one is Murder on the Rockport Limited from Adventure Zone. And I'm not mad at this. So it's got a 4.65 and it has 6,206 ratings. So that's actually really impressive. Like that's, that is actually like super impressive because it's a lot of ratings for the the average to be so high. I absolutely love the Adventure Zone podcast, like the OG cycle of it, love it. So I've been very excited to collect the graphic novels as they have been coming out. Murder on the Rockport Limited in particular is one that I really enjoy because it is an isolated closed circle mystery on a train, but with magic. And so it was just super fun. It's a very funny, like the podcast is hilarious. The graphic novels are very humorous. It's really cute. It's well done. I gave it four stars and I would definitely recommend it. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, I wouldn't say it's, I mean, 4.65, like, I don't know that it's like amazing, but I don't know. This also gets into like how different people use the star ratings on Goodreads. And that's like a whole other, that's a whole other journey that maybe we don't need to go on today. But um, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't give this a four and a half or a five, but I definitely think it's a well-deserved four star. So like, I totally see how it's on here and I'm and frankly pretty impressed that it's got such a high rating to it. Number three is Network Effect, which also has a 4.65 rating 
uh, to it at the time of filming, but it only has 398 ratings because it has not yet come out at the time of filming. It is coming out in May. And um, I totally agree with this. I gave this four and a half stars. I gave it five stars on Goodreads because I tend, if I have a half star, I usually round up just to, you know, kind of like be fair to the book. But uh, I gave it four and a half stars. I think it's the second best book in the series to date. I think people who haven't read it yet or like who are following the series are going to be really happy with this one um, because it's just it's just fantastic. I'm trying to see kind of some of this. Yeah, I mean, it's got a lot of five stars to it already. I was one of them and a ton of people have marked it as to read. So I don't think you'll be disappointed. This book also falls into the category of being later in a series. So people who are reading it are more likely to already like that world and like what's going on with it. And therefore probably, unless it's just bad, more likely to give it a good rating. So that is the third one, also 4.65 at the time of filming. And then the fourth one is called The Shaming of the Strong by Sarah Williams. And I gave this five stars. I would probably give this four stars now. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to go ahead and modify this. Uh, when I was filming, I gave it five stars. I think I gave it four stars now. This book was really pivotal for me. This is about to get deep, guys. I'm about to make some people mad because it's a very controversial topic. This book was very pivotal for me in moving from being pro-life to being pro-choice. And that is because the person who wrote it, um, I know personally, and this is their experience of discovering that they were carrying a child who could not survive being born. And this person is a deeply committed Christian, um, an evangelical, and basically what she and her husband arrived at was that they felt like they wanted to carry the pregnancy to term and felt like that was their way of um, honoring their daughter's life and, you know, basically almost looking at it as, you know, I have a sick child. I'm going to cry talking about this. I have a sick child and I'm going to love them through to their death, which I, you know, totally think that was, there was no, there was no good circumstance. There was no good um, outcome here. So that was what they decided to do. But what was pivotal about this book for me, and I should say the writing in this is really nice. It's a very well done memoir. It's really good. The thing that was pivotal about this for me in terms of my thinking was they really wrestled with, would it be more kind to terminate the life of this, you know, this fetus that they truly believe is like a child, like fully a baby, like fully a person, is it almost like kind of pulling the plug to end her life at this point and not put, you know, the mother's body through anymore, not put her through any potential suffering, or would it be more kind to carry it through? And I should say that there was not, anyway, you need to read the book. But the reason this was so pivotal for me is that I had never thought of a use case before where, cause I was raised very fundamentalist like that, or I wasn't raised that way. I went to a very fundamentalist school and the way that this was always framed was like, it is murder. There's never a circumstance in which this is okay. Like they would show us pictures of terminated fetuses and shock and horrify us with it. And I'd never seen somebody who I knew personally and know is like, a very committed, very serious Christian actually process through like, is this the best, like, is this the best choice? Like, could a termination be the right choice um, in the kindest, like most loving action? And just having that paradigm shift of thinking through that issue. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'd, I, I was, it's probably unfair to say that this is like totally revolutionary, but this really like tipped me over the line and being much more open to the idea of a choice being something that was like theologically valid. Um, and since then I've, I'd say I've moved even further down that path. <laughs> um, but anyway, all that to say, this was very revolutionary to my thinking. So 4.64, it's got 168 ratings. It's a pretty niche audience. This is not like a widely distributed book, but it is a very beautiful, it's very beautifully written. It's very thought provoking. Um, I think obviously a lot of content warnings for it are in order. Um, I would certainly recommend it. I gave it five stars. I think now I would say like four stars is probably more appropriate all around. I would recommend this one. It doesn't surprise me that the rating is this high just given the distribution of it and the intended audience. Okay, moving on to a different type of controversial subject, I guess, is March Book 3. So it has a 4.64 rating and it has 13,000 ratings. So that's pretty impressive. 
I gave this five stars and I think if I'm remembering rightly, this was my favorite of the three volumes, either this or the second one. I can't remember which one I ended up liking better, but I completely co-signed this rating. I gave it five stars. I think that that little trio of graphic novels is a masterpiece. I think it is on its way to becoming kind of a classic in the same way that like Mouse is a classic. Fantastic. Great. Can't wait for the sequel, which is going to be run at some point, I believe. So I definitely agree with that one. And then Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kammerer. I gave this four stars. This is about, this is like almost like science as poetry. It is beautifully written. It's 4.6 stars and I see that it has 9,763 ratings, which is pretty impressive. So I, yeah, I totally agree with this. Um, I mean, obviously I gave it slightly lower just because it wasn't, it, it's not like an all time favorite book, which is kind of where 4.5 and 5 come into play for me personally. So that's why I wouldn't give it a four and a half or a five star, but it is undeniably beautifully written. I think if you are interested in science writing, but find it a little intimidating, like if you're interested in the topic of like nature, but don't want something super dry, this, this really, I remember when I was, I listened and no, I listened to this one. I actually didn't read it. I don't think I, I was using it almost like a meditation in the morning because it was so beautifully written and it's thinking through different aspects of nature but adding in this layer of traditional indigenous understandings of nature here in North America and kind of how kind of those traditional understandings of nature can talk to more sort of like western sciencey understandings of nature it's just beautifully done basically is the bottom line this is a beautifully done book really recommend i personally didn't like fully just like oh this is a favorite which is why i didn't give it a higher rating but i really agree with that as the rating okay and then the next two are two of my all-time favorite books so first i have stand from the beginning the definitive history of ideas of racist ideas in america by ibram x kendi this has a 4.59 uh, 4 average rating with 6008 rating so pretty good and I gave it five stars. This is one of my favorite nonfiction books ever. This is also a history of ideas, which is a sub genre of nonfiction that I personally really enjoy. So I both love this specific book and I love it as a great example of a genre that I love. This book is really like challenging, but not abrasive, if that makes sense. Like it doesn't have to be abrasive because the things that it is presenting are abrasive enough. And um, I know that there was a children's version that came out recently or like a young adult version to be more accessible to like teens that I've not read, but my friend Bethany at Beautifully Bookish Bethany, I know she read it and thinks that it was really well done. This is a book that I would recommend to just about anyone. I really recommend the audiobook. I think it's great. I actually probably am due for a re-listen, but I think it does just as a really good idea of breaking down like how racist ideas have evolved over time in America. And I should say specifically racist ideas against black people. Um, I don't I don't believe that we really get into a lot of like other minority groups. There's plenty of racist ideas about <laughs> against them as well. But anyway, this is just a fantastically done book. I am not surprised that it is so highly rated. It won a lot of awards like it's fantastic. One of my all time favorite books, as is the next book, which is Wildfire by Alona Andrews, which this gets into the late in the series high rating. So it's a 4.57. And it has 22,538 ratings. So that's not I think the, I think that's the most ratings we've seen so far. Uh, Wildfire is my favorite of the three main hidden legacy books. And I guess my favorite hidden legacy book period. I think it is a fantastic ending to the series. Alona Andrews knows how to do endings really well, which actually we'll get into the next one here. But it's just a really, it's a very satisfying ending to that trilogy. It's a satisfying book in and of its own right. There are great character moments. I love the way that it ends. It's just great. So I recommend that one. I do think you need to start at the beginning in that series. So start with Burn For Me, which is also really good. Even Burn For Me, I get I gave four and a half stars to and it's my least favorite book in the three of them. So there you go. So start with Burn For Me, but then get to Wildfire because it is great. And actually on that same note, I'll just go ahead and talk about the next one, which is Magic Triumphs by Alona Andrews, last book in the Kate Daniel series. Now I gave this one four stars because I think this book needed another 50 to 100 pages to really sing, to really be great. And it just didn't have quite enough room, I think, to breathe, but it's so well executed. Like it's a 10 book series plus a bunch of side novellas and a side novel. 
and it's ending it very satisfyingly, which I think is why the rating is so high. So it's 4.57, average rating 19,653 ratings. So it's fantastic, highly recommend. I just don't think it's like the best in the series, but I do think it's a really satisfying ending. So I can see how it has such a high rating because it's very, it's that's not easy to do. You know what I mean? Like I think you have to walk the line between giving the readers something that they like are satisfied with but not, sorry, I was just waving at my neighbor, uh, but not um, being too predictable. I think this one probably aired a little on the side of predictability, but not fully. I do think it had a couple of, I don't know. I think that they pulled it off. I, they just, they do endings really well. And then finally, the last book in this top 10 is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Now, I have this as five stars. That is inaccurate. I would give this four stars. Um, I think I just gave all the Harry Potter books five stars when I was putting them in here originally. Uh, I would give this four stars. Now, in terms of number of ratings, I just saw. So the average rating is 4.57 and it has 2,307,193 ratings. So there you go. Um, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is my second least favorite in the trilogy, or not the trilogy, in the series as a whole. So for me, it is not one of the better Harry Potter books. I think that it, it's kind of a filler book. And that's really where a lot of the weakness in it is. I think that there's some iconic things that happen in this book, especially at the ending. But I think the journey to get from the start of the book to the end of the book has a lot of filler in it. And I think this is the book I most feel the constraints of the tying each book to a school year premise because I think probably this didn't need to be, like, I think, I don't know. I just think that it wasn't enough. There wasn't enough real meat in this particular one. Like there wasn't a driving, here's what it is. The macro plot stuff is fantastic. The micro plot stuff of like this specific book, I think is pretty weak. So there you go. I mean, it's still really good. It definitely sets you up for a very satisfying conclusion to the series, which my favorite book in the entire series is the last one. So it sets all that up very nicely. I just think that it suffers a little bit as a book in its own right, basically. So there you go. Those are my opinions about the 10 top rated books that I have read based on Goodreads. And I really, I thought this was a, a fun little exercise, a nice little melange of books in here. No huge surprises, really. I think most of these I probably, you know, I'm not shocked to see any of these. And just looking at some of the next ones after it, it's like Magic Binds, which is Kate Daniels number nine, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which is Harry Potter number three, White Hot uh, by Lona Andrews, which is The Hidden Legacy number two. So, I mean, there's a lot of series in this top little bit. Um, scrolling down, I'm trying to find like one of my more like hot takes here. I don't really think I have any. I tend to be pretty aligned. Well, okay, the first one I see that's like kind of controversial is the Rock Chick Revenge, which is Rock Chick number five, has a average rating of 4.48 and I gave that a two star. So there you go. Um, anyway, let me know what you thought about this idea. Thank you again to Jean for inspiring me slash like me just taking this idea from you. I, I thought it was a great video and I wanted to do it too because I thought it was a fun idea. So definitely go check her out. But yeah, I think that will do it for now. So let me know what you thought of any of my hot takes here uh, in, in the comments down below or what you thought of any of these books. And yeah, I think that that will do it for now. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!